Hello everyone, Jeff here with an example of an interest rate swap. In an interest rate swap, somebody is making a payment or receiving interest in a form that they do not like and so they swap it with some other form of interest that they prefer. Uh, since it is a swap instead of a regular forward agreement, the word swap implies not only that you're swapping something, but also that you're doing it a, a series of times rather than just once, which you would do with a forward agreement. In this example, you have $100,000 in floating rate debt on which you make payments once per year. Uh, that just means that the rate you pay is uh, based on something like LIBOR or the prime rate and when it changes the interest payment that you make also changes. We're saying here that you don't like that and so you would like to convert to a fixed rate and you and a swap counterparty agree to the reference interest rate 7% with payments to be exchanged once per year. I advise that you always make a diagram uh, when you are looking at a problem like this because there can be multiple people involved and uh, money going multiple directions. So here you, you, have $100,000 in floating rate debt. So you are making a payment to a bank at the floating rate. You are going to convert that to a fixed rate with a counterparty. So there is a counterparty and you have agreed to a fixed rate of 7%. So you are going to be paying the counterparty $7,000. In exchange, the counterparty is going to pay you the floating rate. So you and the counterparty are exchanging a fixed rate for a floating rate. So we can now answer a question like this. At the end of the first year, the interest rate is 8%. Who pays whom and how much? Well, if the interest rate is 8%, that means the floating rate is requires a payment of $8,000. And so you are going to pay the bank $8,000 because that's your obligation to the bank. But the counterparty is going to pay you the $8,000 and you are going to pay the counterparty $7,000. The net effect is that the counterparty pays you $1,000. So three things are happening but they boil down to fewer things. One is that you don't actually pay the counterparty $7,000 and then they pay you back $8,000. It's just that the counterparty pays you $1,000, the difference. Then you pay the bank $8,000. The net idea is that you have paid $7,000 no matter what. In this case you've paid the bank $8,000, but you've gotten $1,000 from the counterparty, so you have paid $7,000. Uh, a second question here, at the end of the second year, the interest rate is 4%. Who pays whom and how much? Well, at 4%, the floating rate no longer requires an $8,000 payment, it requires a $4,000 payment. And so with you always paying the counterparty $7,000, in this case the counterparty is giving you back $4,000, the net effect is that you pay the counterparty $3,000. In total, you pay the bank $4,000, you pay the counterparty $3,000, and your total payment is $7,000. So forward rate agreements can be set up many different ways, but there is always a common theme which we can illustrate with what's going on here. You have made some agreement um, regarding an interest rate, and in this case it's to pay a floating rate. You don't want to pay a floating rate. So you have someone else pay you the floating rate, which is what's happening on this left pointed arrow here, where the counterparty is paying you the floating rate. This essentially cancels out that part of the agreement. It's essentially that the counterparty is paying the bank the floating rate. Um, and of course the counterparty isn't going to make that payment for nothing. They require something in return and the agreement you've made is that you are going to pay the counterparty a fixed amount of $7,000. 
So the common theme is that there's always some action that wipes out an action that somebody wants to get rid of, in this case paying a floating rate. You'll notice that no matter what the interest rate turns out to be, and therefore no matter what the value in this green box turns out to be, the net effect is that the floating rate gets wiped out for you. Whatever you pay to the bank, you are receiving from the counterparty. It might as well not be happening. And the only thing going on, in the end, is that you are paying $7,000 total.